Hi, this is your host Supreme Bharti and welcome to this panel discussion. And today we have with us James Faulkner, Director of Product Marketing of Hybrid Platforms Adoption at Red Hat and Reza Rahman, Principal Program Manager for Java on Azure at Microsoft. James, Reza, it's great to have you both on the show. Today we are going to talk about Red Hat, JBoss Enterprise, Application Platform and Azure. James, can you start with what is this platform all about and who is it catering to? Yeah, sure. So JBoss Enterprise Application Platform, or we call it EAP for short, um, that's Red Hat's flagship Jakarta EE platform. Um, it's been used for a number of years for building high-performance and business-critical applications, transactional apps, secured apps, um, you know, traditional web apps. Um, and so we have partnered with Microsoft to bring that same platform that we've had you know, on-prem for a number of years onto the cloud and take advantage of not only the cloud scale, but also the capabilities in Azure um, to you know, really enhance the, the value of that EAP platform on a global scale. Riza, now can you talk about that through this partnership, how is it helping your Microsoft Azure customer base as well as Red Hat customer base? Who is benefiting from this partnership? Well, both Red Hat and Microsoft and the customers are benefit, benefiting for, for it, obviously. So as you're aware, you know, Azure is one of the premier public cloud providers out there. You know, it's either number one or number two, however you look at it. So we have a huge ins- install base. Uh, and a lot of our install base is, you know, the world's largest companies. So naturally, those type of companies didn't start their Java journey and their enterprise computing journey, you know, in, in, in the last three years, right? They started it 10, 15 years ago, sometimes 20 years ago. So there's a lot of mission critical applications, uh, you know, Java workloads that are running at these companies. They're not necessarily using the, you know, the bleeding, absolute bleeding edge thing out there. You know, they're often using something that's proven and has been around for a very long time. Uh, in this case, something like JBoss CAP. So, you know, they do these customers do modernize their uh, their enterprise applications, mission critical um, uh, enterprise applications, and they do do that on the public cloud in, in many cases, right? If not probably a majority of cases. So we absolutely had to, uh, you know, uh, build a robust solution around being able to run these type of workloads without necessarily draining the ocean and completely throwing away your application and doing something funny with it. So this is the reason why we established, uh, you know, the, the particular relationship around JBoss CAP uh, and enabling it on Azure in the best possible way. And, uh, you know, honestly, we, we have quite a few customers already uh, using the solution and, uh, you know, many more in the pipeline. And uh, we, as you are aware, we're more and more strengthening uh, the offerings, making it even more compelling, uh, you know, all in service of uh, our customers, our joint customers at the end of the day. You know, these are... Red Hat customers by virtue of having JBoss CAP subscriptions, their Azure customers or Microsoft customers by virtue of they're running the you know, fact that they're running these workloads on Azure. Uh, and of course, it's a win-win for the customer as well if both of these companies are working together uh, to make the best possible solution. If you look at the open source world, especially in the cloud space, new technologies are coming at an explosive rate. Even I cannot keep a track on what's happening in the industry, which is actually exciting. However, customers cannot keep up with these new technologies. They cannot be dipping in those toes or start embracing these technologies that can become too overwhelming. They want something which is stable, reliable, mature that they can rely on. Talk a bit about the maturity of JBoss. Of course, Java doesn't need any validation there, but talk about the maturity of this market and what kind of customers are using some of these technologies. And also, if you can touch on what kind of challenges they face. We, you know, Red Hat, by virtue of having this product around for a number of years, we have a lot of big and small customers uh, running these applications on these app servers. Um, And as you said, you know, they can't necessarily dip their toe into the latest and greatest every single day. So oftentimes they're looking at, you know, solutions that incrementally improve their situation. So for example, data center consolidation, um, moving these apps out of the data center onto the cloud, not necessarily changing the app significantly, um, but really taking advantage of that scale. Um, and so and that's kind of why uh, we, we wanted to have, you know, this partnership with Microsoft and these offerings on Azure because we do have customers looking at things like re-architecting, but the vast majority of customers 
running these workloads that they've been running successfully for a number of years, they don't want to, you know, rock the boat and, and burn it to the ground and start over. Um, so this really provides that path forward for them as they modernize their business around these applications. Yep, so I'll echo basically what James is saying, right? So, uh, you know, many there's many different reasons why these large customers move to the cloud. Data center exit is, is a primary one. You know, they're looking to make their operations, uh, you know, get get better bang for the buck, if you will, uh, you know, instead of maintaining a large in-house uh, data center presence. In many cases, operationally speaking, there's a good ROI in, in moving to the public cloud. And we certainly try to make those uh, things competitive, right? So that is one of, one of the reasons. A lot of the reasons is globalization, uh, you know, and uh, probably maybe not always for big companies, but medium-sized companies when they're moving to, uh, you know, take their operations and business to the to the world's to the global scale. Uh, often they do not have those kind of capacities, right? Whereas something like Azure does have those capacities. Uh, the biggest headache for a lot of these customers is um, in moving to the cloud, making sure that uh, things remain, uh, you know, operationally stable, uh, reasonably cost-effective, uh, and you know, without necessarily rewriting everything absolutely from scratch. Um, a lot of the common and ch- other common challenges are upskilling. You know, a lot of these customers, believe it or not, still are relatively new to things like containerization, you know, things like Kubernetes. Uh, even you know general uh, ways the ways you know cloud your infrastructure and uh, data center management differs from the cloud and on premise so a lot of those kind of concerns actually so this is one of the reasons why uh, you know we have our offerings one of the sort of uh, driving principles is to make it uh, as easy as possible for customers that have these mission critical workloads and they need need it moved reliably without big rewrites uh, and also doing it in the in the most productive way possible. Right now, I'm looking at two big uh, Linux players with WSL2. Windows has kind of become one of the biggest uh, Linux distributions out there in the consumer space. We used to joke about era of desktop Linux is there <laughs> through Windows, ironically. But jokes apart, uh, when I look at you two folks here, I want to talk a bit about the kind of partnership between Microsoft and Red Hat that goes beyond this announcement that we are discussing today. It absolutely does go beyond that. Um, Again, James, do you want to take a stab at it? And then I'll... We've been partners with Microsoft for a long time. And like you said, not just with EAP. We we started with our Red Hat Enterprise Linux. uh, And then we've expanded it to much of our portfolio, including OpenShift, Ansible, and of course, JBoss and our middleware stack. Um, We've we've supported our software on Azure for a long time. But, you know, several years ago, we really increased this partnership because we really feel like Microsoft, you know, gets it, right? They're, it, especially in the middleware space, they jumped headfirst into the Java space several years ago and, you know, have, haven't looked back. And so uh, with Red Hat's track record in the Java uh, community and Microsoft's as well, um, we feel like it's, you know, a natural partnership uh, where we, we can offer our expertise in the middleware space on top of, you know, a fantastic uh, cloud platform with Azure. And it goes beyond just supporting the bits, right? It's, also a partnership in terms of how we uh, work with customers. So we oftentimes go to a customer together and that's, that really sends a strong message to a customer who may be invested heavily in Red Hat or may be invested heavily in Microsoft and not so much on Red Hat and, and seeing, those, seeing us working together, providing that partnership and providing the integrated support offering across the portfolio really sends that strong message that you know, Red Hat and Microsoft are here to support these customers as they go through that uh, transition. So something as you uh, you know alluded to, you know Microsoft is on a journey. It has been on a, I think, a fairly dramatic journey that has worked out well for everyone. Uh, you know, it's a very, I think, I, it's no longer news for me to say it's not the same company, uh, you know, that it used to be in the early ni- '90s or even early 2000s. Um, you know, we are embracing open source in a big way on the cloud. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, something like RHEL is, is is a very key part of that, right? In, in enabling the Linux story and and, and more broadly speaking, the open source story on the Azure platform and treating Azure as a platform for all rather rather than a platform for some, right? So, uh, yeah, it's been, um, honestly, Red Hat has been uh, one of the key uh, partnerships in in doing that, in entering the Java space. We are, we want to be humble, you know, we are new, relative newcomers to the Java space. Um, So it is absolutely important that we work with uh, partners like Red Hat and, you know, bring the 
customer credibility that they have, uh, hopefully with a very powerful, uh, you know, public cloud, uh, you know, and make a win-win for everyone. Now let's just go back to this announcement. Talk a bit about some of the new features and capabilities for users. So what we announced were several important updates to our offerings for EAP on Azure. The first one is uh, support for clustering. And so when we uh, started down this journey with Microsoft, we wanted to provide more than just a single type of solution for our customers. They're oftentimes, if they're exiting the data center, they might also want to get out of the day-to-day operational aspects of running an app server um, and really focus on the business value of the applications themselves. And so uh, one of the services on Azure is Azure App Service. Um, And so what we announced uh, two years ago was support for EAP as a native runtime through Azure App Service, uh, which is a a platform as a service offering from Azure. Uh, This past month, we added clustering support. This is a really key feature for a number of our larger customers, banks, government, healthcare, retail, um, that are doing transactional applications, which they've been doing for a number of years. And so having this support now allows them to take not just their easy web apps onto the cloud, but also their you know transactional uh, distributed applications into Azure very easily and quickly. And as Reza said earlier, it's important for us to make it easy to do. So adding that kind of opens the door for those customers. Uh, we also announced a, a new listing for EAP on Azure Red Hat OpenShift as part of this flexibility and choice we want to give customers for customers looking to containerize. Again, not necessarily burn everything to the ground, but uh, take their applications, containerize them, and then use the services surrounding uh, the Azure platform to manage them, we announced the availability of EAP on Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which is our uh, Kubernetes offering, a native offering on, on Azure. So that's the second one. And then the final one, uh, we also have a number of customers who ha- do have a large investment with Microsoft in Azure. Uh, they have, you know, a committed spend program. Um, and so for those customers who have, you know, they've already spent the money, uh, they, they, they have the opportunity to move their applications and essentially burn down that committed spend. They can now do that with EAP uh, in a pay-as-you-go offer as uh, consumption-based pricing has become you know, super popular, almost expected in many cases. And so we wanted to offer that uh, to our customers. So that was the third leg of that announcement. As I mentioned, we do want to make sure uh, EAP customers are successful on Azure. So there's three different uh, primary mechanisms that we provide that, right? Three different destinations, if you will. Uh, One is a more conservative customer base, and we have quite a bit of those. You know, they're really, when they're moving to the public cloud, they're still wanting to do things more or less the same way that they have been doing. Uh, So we offer uh, fairly robust uh, mechanisms to enable JBoss EAP on just Azure virtual machines. Uh, The announcement, uh, and by the way, we're evolving. I'll I'll talk about all three offerings in a moment. These are all actively evolving things, and maybe in a moment we can talk about, you know, how do customers work with us and make sure we are actually going the right directions for these, but setting that aside for a moment. So conservative customers, we have uh, VM-based offerings for them that they can run JBoss EAP1 uh, on, on, uh, and uh, the change here is that we now have a pay-as-you-go VM-based image, right? And actually that's also consumed by something else called Azure Solution Templates, and that makes, that again is, is goes to the productivity story. So that's one specific change that we're announcing as, as part of this announcement. Uh, the second one uh, is, I would say, let's not say super conservative, but somewhat more progressive customers. And a lot of those want to containerize their applications a bit. Right? And OpenShift is a great platform for that. And we have, by the way, ARO, Azure Red Hat OpenShift. That's another uh, sort of first-class managed offering, one of the few uh, you know, that, that offer OpenShift in a managed way. And basically, we have a solution template that makes it super easy, automates the provisioning process. We're taking a JBoss EAP instance and you know putting it on an OpenShift cluster in the most productive way possible, right? So that's what the solution template is about. Uh, and then yeah, again the app service uh, offering is relatively old. We started a little bit modest, right? So we didn't have we had load balancing support, so the auto scaling and creating uh, like a sort of a set of JBoss EAP instances that form a logical load balanced set, right? That has been there for some time. And really, what we're doing now is adding. We're adding support for first-class JBoss EAP clustering all the way down to things like, you know, JTA transaction recovery and management, uh, you know, stateful cl- man- maintaining a stateful session bin cluster. So, yeah, I mean, reliability to the max, basically. Like everything that uh, 
uh, in JBoss EAP allows us a state. We now uh, are enabling that uh, in app service for specific cases, right? Specifically, in order to uh, take advantage of this, you need to join your app service cluster to an existing VNet. And the moment you do that, we say, okay, now let's create a uh, you know reliable, uh, high performance, uh, sort of all the way down to uh, you know state complete state management kind of type of scenario for your JBoss EAP cluster deployment. What kind of things we can expect next from this collaboration between Microsoft and Red Hat? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Reza, you can uh, you can join in as well. Um, yeah, we do have a number of uh, things on the roadmap to evolve all of these offerings. Um, one in particular I'm really uh, looking forward to is the ability to do uh, free SKUs. Uh, currently, when you use EAP on Azure, uh, in order to kick the tires, you still have to pay. And so we want to enable this uh, free SKU so that customers don't have to make an upfront investment just to see if, you know, what, what the operational mechanisms look like, how it may differ from what they currently do today, and give them a sense of how easy it is to use this offering um, and then upgrade later on uh, to, you know, for production use uh, to paid SKUs. So absolutely looking forward to that one. Um, Rez, you want to add some additional color? So all of those three arcs that we talked about um, are under active development. And uh, Frankly, I, I would like to turn this around. Uh, you know, the customers, we would like for customers to take a look at what current state is for JBoss EAP and Azure, give it a try, you know, try it uh, in the real migration cases, and, and we are there to help them, right? So I'll, uh, maybe I can share a link uh, after the fact. You know, it's as simple as, you know, if you don't even talk to, want to talk to a salesperson, you want to talk to directly to engineering, well, you fill out this nice little survey, and then, you know, it comes directly to people like me and James, and we will reach out to you and talk to you about our roadmap and capabilities and help you out with your migration cases. So all of these three things, and perhaps even more, right? Um, you know, we are looking to evolve all of these things. So all of these have active roadmaps. Uh, on the VM side of things, we need to do a little bit more polishing around uh, the solution templates. Uh, and perhaps uh, right now we're not, we don't offer a tremendous amount of version uh, diversity for JBoss EAP and. JDK and OS versions, maybe we, we were looking to add a few more of those options on the VM side of things and uh, polish up the, uh, the solution templates a little bit more. Um, right now, there's a few, few hiccups, if you, especially if you want to use in things like uh, uh, bring your own subscription as opposed to pay as you go. So a bit of sort of maintenance type of ease of use, uh, you know, improvement of quality of life kind of changes on the VM side. Uh, there's one specific uh, feature that I'm particularly keen on on the on the JBoss EAP on the Arrow side, and that is right now you can do an initial provisioning of your app. So you say so you have an app on on, uh, on a repo, and you say okay, provision that using uh, J, uh, JBoss EAP and Arrow uh, and using a technological source to image. You may be aware of that it's uh, relatively common in, in the OpenShift space. So what we're looking to do is there's also uh, OpenShift pipelines that's built into an ARO cluster. So we're trying to create a, an, an option where, you know, for development cases or what have you, you can say, okay, deploy my app using this GitHub repo, but also next time I do, I push something to this GitHub repo, auto redeploy my application and auto update my, my uh, deployment on, uh, you know, that's created through the solution template. So that's an, that's an interesting one. I'm, Kind of excited about, and you know, would love to get customer feedback and maybe even active usage while we're developing these features. Uh, and yeah, definitely on the app service side, we are looking towards more of a scale out question, right? So, you know, right now we've proven it out in terms of uh, it's it's a good quality service. It has, I think, most of the features that customers would expect. I think now we need to focus more on how do we scale out those customers and make it perhaps even more price competitive to use uh, JBoss EAP and App Service, right? App Service, because this is a PaaS solution, uh, frankly speaking, it tends to be a little bit pricier, right? So we, we need to find, if you will, uh, uh, creative ways of making it more price competitive, right? Um, as you just mentioned, uh, adding a free tier is one. Right, so you know, being able to make that okay if you're you're not doing ready to do a production deployment yet, what can we do for you to make it make make it a little bit cheaper for you? In the meanwhile, can we waive the JBoss EAP licenses? Can we waive the infrastructure fees for now? Right, for trial use cases, uh, maybe adding more flexibility in terms of what type of uh, uh, horsepower you would need 
you know, for, for your particular application. If it's a if it's an application that run on can run on slightly lower resources, that's another way of you know being a little bit more creative in, in terms of price competitiveness. So um, adding like sort of dev test scenarios. So if you're familiar with JBoss EAP, um, you know, on-premise deployments, you don't actually you really you're only required to pay for production deployments, right? Where you're gonna call up support and get help. You don't necessarily pay JBoss EAP subscriptions for your dev test scenarios, right? So Maybe that's another area we, we could think about. How do we make things more price competitive? So yeah, th- these these kinds of things that we now need to explore to see how do we make it uh, okay. You get pass, you get productivity, but you know how can how can we also make it uh, more price palatable for you? James, anything that you would like to add before we wrap this up? No, I think uh, Reza actually hit had a really great point, which is that flexibility and choice. So it's not, we don't just have app service, we don't just have VMs, we don't just have containers. We have all three. And depending on how the customer um, wants to manage their solution going forward, we have paths for them. And so I'm, you know, really looking forward to enhancing those paths with some of the features that Reza and I talked about and just making it even easier to, uh, to consume this platform while Azure and EAP both continue to evolve. Um, for example, EAP will have a new uh, release, a new major release later this year, EAP 8, which brings some additional capabilities, things like Jakarta EE 10 support and a number of other new features in the platform. And seeing that, marrying that with Azure uh, is really, uh, I'm really happy to see that. I'm really excited to see how customers uh, adopt that. The main call to action for me would be, uh, you know, if you're somewhat on the fence and, and you're a big Java customer and, and you have a Java workload, uh, maybe rethink how you think of Microsoft and, um, you know, rethink how you think of, of Azure, right? Um, in my opinion, we're doing a lot of quality work to try to uh, enable these Java runtimes in the best possible way on Azure. And, you know, the work we're doing with JWAS CAP is a good example of that, right? So my main takeaway is, you know, maybe rethink how you thought of, uh, you know, Azure before and, you know, pay attention to the work that we're doing here give it a spin and you know we do at least uh, claim to be a customer driven company and obviously from my my standpoint i believe we are uh, so don't just you know try these things out also uh, try these things out and reach out to us and say okay this is what i like this is what i don't like this is what i like to see you know, uh, and so on right so that that to me is a key um, key message you know engage with us see what we have to offer and see if it makes sense for you. Reza, James, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only this partnership, but also talk about the larger open source cloud native landscape and your partnership together. Thanks so much for those insights. And I would love to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah.